Hello everybody. Today we are going to be doing Artistic Abandon's painting, Solace. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit as we go about what to look out for when you're teaching it, and this will be just sort of a step-by-step -step of how I teach it. So we're going to start with a big green-handled brush. You're going to dip that into the water. Just wipe the excess water off the lip of the cup a couple times. You don't actually need to dab it on your paper towel. And we're going to take a little bit of black, and we're going to take about a third of the pile of white that's next to it and swirl it around, pressing down as you mix so that the water leaves the bristles and goes into the paint. Be sure to say that to people, otherwise they won't press down, and when they add it to their canvas, it'll start dripping and making a hot mess of everything. So we're gonna start now. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of extra water on my brush. I'm not cleaning it off. I don't swish it around at all. Just dip it in, pull it straight back out, mix it around into the paint again. I'm gonna do that a couple times so that we're really watering down this paint. It's gonna make it easier for everybody to blend. People really struggle with that when they haven't been painting for quite some time. All right, so I'm gonna start on my right hand side of the canvas. And I'm just doing long paint strokes up and down. You want to rush them through this part because you'll find that it's going to slow to a crawl when they start doing the black on their branches. So don't let them take too long on this. I like to tell people when I know I'm going to have to rush them that it's intentional. So I'll say something along the lines of, okay, we've got a lot of painting to get through, which means for these first few steps that are less important, I'm going to rush you. So if it feels like I'm rushing you, it's because I am. And that sort of gets people to laugh and makes them calm down a little bit and not worry too much that they're not quite keeping up because you are going to go faster than them. And I'll point out to them too that it's my job to go faster so that they can see where they're going and that they don't have to worry about staying quite as fast as we go. All right, so when I've gone about, well, about a third, maybe a little bit more than that across the canvas, I'm gonna take a little bit more white about half of that rest of that pile, mix it right into where I had mixed my gray before, so I'm getting lighter with my gray now. Swirl it around, add a touch of water to it. Swirl that around, again, reminding them to press down as they mix so that the water leaves the bristles. And I'm gonna go right next to my dark gray with this lighter gray. And then I'm gonna blend. So the way we tell people to blend, we remind them to go next to it first, and then without adding any more paint to the brush, we're gonna go right back on top of the edge where your two colors meet. So I'm going into the lighter, into the darker, into the lighter, into the darker, until they blend and you can't tell where one starts and the other stops. So the goal is to have a nice quiet transition, not a hard edge. And then you'll work your way another three quarters, not three quarters, another third of the way or so across. And your customers are gonna go a lot slower than this, that's okay. Just do your best to move them on as quickly as possible but know that it's gonna take them roughly double the time that it takes you. All right, when you've gone another, <clears throat> when you're about two thirds to three quarters of the way across the canvas, we're gonna just dip into some more white. We're gonna mix that around into our gray. So we're using up the rest of that pile. Swirl it around so you've got your lightest gray yet. And we'll do the same thing one more time. Start right next to our medium gray and then blend it in. Load up your brush, get a lot of paint on it when you're doing this. You'll find that people just get a little bit on there and then they're basically just dry brushing and scumbling and they're not completely covering the canvas. And it's gonna take them twice as long if they don't really load up their brushes. All right, so that's your background. You're gonna drop that brush into the water. We're gonna to switch to that short-handled square brush. That's the number four. 
And I'm going to switch into just some straight white. So I'm dipping that brush into the water, just wiping the excess water off in the lip of the cup, and then swirling it around into the edge of my white. And we're going to start in the bottom right corner. We're going to come up, nice wobbly line. So we're most of the way across the canvas. I'm stopping about the width of my palm from that left hand edge of the canvas. And a lot of that background paint is going to swiggle in there. That's okay. We're not going for pure white. If you're working with a small group, feel free to stop and blow dry before you start this. If you're working with a big group, you don't really have to. You don't want to take all that extra time blow drying if it's not necessary. So you'll see it's kind of streaky. Everybody's going to worry about that. Remind them that it's okay, that we're putting all a bunch of other stuff on top of it. So I get them to do just this main part, and then we'll start to take our branches off to the side. So I start with this little guy over here. Let it weave and wobble its way. Notice these are all squiggly lines. The bottom edge should essentially flow into the branch. So the bottom edge does not create a, an angle. It's not a corner at all. It's just a curve. The top edge will actually come to a point. And that's going to be true for all of your branches. And fattest point of the branch should be where it hits your main branch. So we're not doing all of the branches with this brush. We're just going to get the main one sort of blocked in. And then we'll switch over to the finer, pointier brush. <clears throat> and all the brushes for the paintings are on those paint palettes that we've created. So you can refer to those for which ones we're using. All right, so I'm petering out before I actually get to that left-hand edge. And then I'm going to switch to my pointy brush. So this is a number three. I'm going to dip it into the water, pull it sopping wet out, and I'm going to put in a couple of these smaller branches that are going to squiggle off. So again, the bottom edge of them is always going to flow into the main branch that it's coming off of. Top edge will actually create an angle. And it's going to virtually disappear as it gets over into that lighter section. That is okay. Don't worry about that. Again, letting it squiggle and wobble. branches in and then we're going to take our black to do our really small ones. All right, so I'm going to clean that paint brush off. Now, normally this would have more time to dry because believe me, they're going to take quite a lot longer than this. So, ideally, I would break at this point so that um it would have time to dry. I like to take my break generally halfway through, but sometimes I do it a little bit earlier. So depending on how fast they've gone, hopefully you will be a little bit shy of an hour. So not quite an hour and you'll go ahead and take your break. So we're gonna pause it, I'm gonna blow dry this, and then we'll go in and we'll do our next bit of painting. All right, welcome back. So we are cleaning off that pointy brush. We're going to pull it sopping wet out of the water, and you're going to pull a little bit of black out from the edge of the pile, swirl the water around into it, dip back in the water, get some more water on your brush. Again, pull a little bit of black out from the edge of the pile, swirl it around. And I'm kind of tapping. So what hopefully is going to happen, and I don't, I'm going to tell me when I'm there. Can you see that there's a little string? Mm. 
You sort want of. it to be forming a little string. That's how you know you've got the right amount of water in there so that you're going to get good solid lines. I'm going to hold my paintbrush right up close to the bristle, rest my hand or my pinky against the canvas as I go, and I'm going to start a little bit farther out from the actual branch ending that I did with my white. You might want to try to zoom in on this. So the, the, the branch with the white actually ends about here. I'm going to start a little bit farther out. I'm going to give it some nice little squiggles and basically start to underline. And you see how I'm letting it wobble a lot. Wobbling is good. And then I'm going to start to add branches that we did not even put any white on for. And remind people that they're going to have big blossoms on top of all of these, so they don't need to worry if they get a couple that they don't really like. They can crisscross over each other. So the goal is to do 11 million and a half of these. This is a very good time to ring the cowbell. You will find people will start getting super, super stressed at this point. So stop, remind them to breathe, take a drink. Sometimes I make them repeat after me. It's only paint. I'll take a couple that'll actually go right off the edge of the canvas. And again, notice that I'm letting it wobble. We don't want it too smooth. It starts to look like seaweed when it's too smooth. And I'm reloading frequently. Don't try to get more paint out of the bristles than you really can. That just makes you press down harder, which makes your lines get fatter. So stop and reload. And periodically as you go, you're going to need to water down a little bit more paint because you're using up the watered down paint as you go. <clears throat> And it's kind of judgment call where you actually put your little shadows. I aim for left side and underside, but if that varies, it's really not that big a deal. We're not going for super perfect light source. Just keep reminding people that this is fun. They will start to get very stressed out right about at this phase. And I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of branches that are going to cross over my main branch. What people tend to do is when they start to put their blossoms on, they'll stop right there because they know the branch is nearby and it looks really odd. So I've started making them actually take a few branches up and over to remind them that they are going to go ahead and cross over that branch with their blossoms. So every time they're making a new branch, they're basically just creating a V. All right, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna start what people have commonly referred to as the eyelashes. So we've done essentially the eyeliner, and now we're gonna add our eyelashes. So I start on the line that we've used to underline, and I'm gonna flick up and out. Now, common things that people do, they'll put a lot of space between them, like this. 
and that starts to look like stripes instead of texture. So you really want to get them to fill in as much as possible. And they're coming up and up. You want to touch that line so they can't really see where the line starts and stops again. And I'll let some of them get pretty big, come most of the way across the branch. Some not so much. You can see that I'm curving it. Helps make the branches look rounded. And they don't have to do it on any of those teeny tiny ones that we just did the black for. We're just focusing on the ones that actually have white. And I try to start at the top and left parts of my branches so that I have dry canvas to rest my hand against since I'm right-handed. For lefties, you can tell them to start down here and work their way over so that they also have dry canvas to rest their hands against. I try to be as conscious as possible of giving people lefty instructions when necessary so that they've got a fair shot of getting it to look good too. So you can see that the branches are starting to take shape a little bit now. And I keep those little eyelashes pretty short in the skinnier parts of the branches. I'll get fatter as I work my way to the fatter parts of the branch for obvious reasons. All right, just about done here. So you can see that I've gotten a lot bigger along the main part of the thickest branch here. All right. So we're going to switch back to that number four, the short square brush. So this time when I clean it, I am going to go ahead and dab it on my paper towel. I'm going to take a little bit of purple and black and mix those together. So it's going to essentially still look black on your plate. When it's thinner and on the canvas, it'll show as more purple. So we're going to start to tap very lightly all over those branches. And what people tend to do is get very concentrated in a circle like that. So that you see how it's all the uh, paint strokes are really close together and they start to look like balls of cotton or something. It looks a little odd. So what I do is I try to get people to come out with a few that come out a little bit farther, more space between them so that it starts to peter out instead of being a really hard final edge. And anything they want to camouflage, any of those branches they don't like, this is a really good way to do it. The blossoms can be a real saving grace. So notice that I'm working around, I don't stay in one place so that I don't get those hard edges. You don't ever want to take like a line of them all close together. That starts to give you actual lines instead of blossoms. Trying to keep it as uneven and irregular as possible. I'll let some of them come in a little farther. Some can come right off the edge of the canvas. Still moving constantly. So this will destroy the brushes. So on the 
paint palette, um, sheets that say which brushes to use. It says Crummy 4. It's because it really does shred it. So in order to preserve the good brushes, don't give them good brushes for this kind of thing. Anytime that you're going to have big tapping like this, you don't want to give them good brushes. And you also find that they will get very vigorous with their tapping and their easels will start to travel across the table. So periodically remind them to grab an easel, pull it back towards them so that they're not going over the other side or knocking into the person who's across from them. So you see how the farther out I get, the more space I have between my dots. Mix myself a little bit more here. So they can get as heavy as they want in the center of the clusters. But lots of space around it as they get farther out. And again, notice that I've taken my blossoms right over that branch. You're going to find, as I said before, that people will try to stop because that branch is there. It looks very unnatural. Make them go right on on top of it. Done. So I give people an optional middle step. The original painting reads fairly gray because I'm just doing two different shades of this purple. I'm doing the purple and black and then I'm going to do purple and white. If people want the whole thing to read a little bit brighter purple, they can do an intermediary step of straight purple. Um, so they would just clean off their paint brushes, go into the straight purple, and add a bunch of that in. I'm going to skip that. I like it a little bit grayer, but again, it's totally personal preference for them. So I'm going to take a scoop of white and a scoop of purple, mix those together till I get a lavender that I like. So you can go as bright or as dark as you want with this. I go for just kind of a medium lavender. And we'll do the same thing, not worrying about hitting the exact same points that we hit before, but just generally the same area. And again, bringing some out a little bit farther. So you still want to see plenty of that background purple and black combo. And you really don't have to press down very hard for this. They will, and that's okay. That's why we can say put out the bad brushes, because they're gonna get shredded. But once they are shredded, it makes for really nice round blossoms. Again, up and over that branch. You can see even my easel is moving and I'm barely touching it. It sort of starts to make you a little bit dizzy after a while watching the canvas wobble like that. I'm still keeping moving around as much as possible. And so right about now would be when you start to give that closing spiel about 
any promos that you're offering. So if you do a tweak a day or a discount for rebooking or anything like that. Frequent painter program. Now is a good time to start telling them about it. And that is pretty much that. All right, so I'm gonna to go to my pointy brush now for our final step. I'm gonna water down a little bit of lavender, but again, you can sign with whatever color you want. Just make sure that everybody's adding water to their paint. And we'll sign the bad boy. Done, and that is how you teach solace.